Hello friends. Today we are gonna be doing a Wikipedia rabbit hole from Costco all the way to Lupus. The home of the $1.50 hot dog I think is a great starting point for any search. All right, let's dive in. Costco, not to be confused with Costco or Cusco. Costco Wholesale Corporation, commonly shortened to Costco, is an American multinational corporation which operates a chain of membership only big box warehouse club retail store. Oh, this is fun. Costco is the third largest retailer in the world. I wonder who's first. Costco is ranked number 11 on the Fortune 500 rankings of the largest United States corporation by total revenue. Costco's worldwide headquarters are in Issaquah, Washington. Washington gets everything, including a lot of rain. Wait a second, what about our homies who aren't in the United States but still want to shop at Costco? Answer. Costco has 871 warehouses worldwide, 602 in the United States, 108 in Canada. Justin Bieber gets the shop at Costco. He's from Canada, in case you didn't know. Also Steve Nash. 40 in Mexico, muy bien. 33 in Japan, 29 in the United Kingdom, 18 in South Korea, 15 in Australia, 14 in Taiwan, six in China, four in Spain, two in France, one each in Iceland, New Zealand, and Sweden. Now to the important part. Do they still have the hot dogs in every single place? Food court menus are tailored to international taste with meat pies, on offer in Australia. Australians, you get kangaroos and meat pies. Poutine in Canada and France. Poutine sounds absolutely delicious, I've never had it. Seafood top pizza in Asian locations. Pastor taco topped pizzas in Mexico. That sounds amazing. Clam chowder in Japan, South Korea, in Taiwan, Plukfisker in Iceland, and jacket potatoes in the UK. The UK gets cold, that's why their potatoes wear jackets. I'm sorry that joke was so bad, but I actually thought it was funny. <laughs> Can you imagine getting a freaking poutine from Costco Food Court? The dream. Where is the world's largest Costco? Largest Costco by square feet was warehouse number 692 in Hillsborough, Oregon. But wait, Oregonians. In 2015, Costco completed an expansion in Salt Lake City, making the new largest Costco at 235,000 square feet. But watch out Salt Lake. They're working on getting approval to build their largest retail store ever in Fresno, California. Frick yeah, Fresno, let's party. I'm interested in the business breakdown here. Food and sundries, 40.5%. Non-foods, 25.6%. Warehouse and slurry and other, 20%. Fresh foods, 13.5%. So they make most of their money on food. Fun fact, I didn't know Costco offered a concierge service. Costco offers a free concierge service to members who purchase electronics to help answer questions regarding setup and use and avoid potential returns due to not understanding how to use the product. What is this? Optimus working at Costco location Locations will see patients without Costco memberships, although a membership is required to fill a prescription at the optical department. Costco audiobook app? In March 2021, Costco started selling audiobooks and launching a corresponding iOS and Android app to listen to purchases. The books are exclusive to Costco members. Flex on your friends when you're like, do you have your Costco card? Can you listen to this book? Probably not. I'm actually really curious as to what, to, what books are on that. If you know, let me know in the comments. Lighting costs are reduced on sunny days because most Costco locations have several skylights. During the day, electronic light meters measure how much light is coming in on the skylights and turn off an appropriate percentage of their interior lights. Costco, you're even better than I was giving you credit for. I was almost gonna say you were my favorite store. Not sure yet. All right, let's do a little dive into light meters. Light meter. A light meter is a device used to measure the amount of light. Seems a little too simple. How does it do that though? Ooh, there are different types. Actinometers. The early exposure meters were called actinometers, not to be confused with scientific instruments with the same name. First developed in the late 1800s after commercial photographic plates became available with consistent sensitivity. These photographic actinometers use light sensitive paper. Let's not live in the past though, let's see where we're at now. Photoelectric types. Now we're using photovoltaic sensors. They generate a voltage proportional to light exposure. Well, how does that even happen? Silicon sensors need an amplification circuit and require a power source such as batteries to operate. CDS light meters use a photoresistor sensor whose electrical resistance changes proportionally to light exposure. That actually makes sense. Reflected light meters measure the light reflected by the scene to be photographed. Instant light meters measure the amount of light falling on the subject using a diffuser with a flat or more commonly hemispherical field of view placed on top of the light sensor. Oh, you know I'm getting excited because we're seeing some equations. N is the relative aperture, F number. Let's look at aperture. In optics, the aperture of the optical system is a hole or an opening in the primary limits light through getting to the system. The opening size of the stop is one factor that affects depth of field. That's like whether or not it's blurry in the background. The biological pupil of an eye is the aperture of the eye in optics nomenclature. Well, let's look at the biological pupil. The pupil is the hole located in the center of the iris of the eye that allows light to strike the retina. Those are some pretty eyes right there. Looks, this almost looks like little hairs or something on the in the eye. Ah, the cornea. The pupil, the lens. Certain drugs can con cause constriction of pupil, such as opioids, other duh, drugs such as atropine, LSD, MDMA, mescaline, can't even pronounce that one, mushroom, 
mushrooms, cocaine, amphetamines may, may cause pupil dilation. Oh, this is a fun fact. Not all animals have circular pupils. Some have slits or ovals which may be oriented vertically, such as crocodiles, vipers, cats, and foxes. Or horizontally, as in rays, flying frogs, mongooses, artiodactyls, such as elk, raid, red deer, reindeer, and hippopotamus, as well as domestic horse. So if you ever get the chance to look a hippopotamus in the eye, notice that his pupil is horizontal. If I'm ever that close to a hippo, I've done something wrong. Clearly the thing that caught my attention here, flying frogs. Oh my gosh, it's like wings on its fingers. I feel like this frog would be very happy with this profile picture. And look at those horizontal pupils. We see you, frog. A flying frog, also called a gliding frog, is a frog that has the ability to achieve gliding flight. This means it can descend at an angle less than 45 degrees relative to the horizontal. Other non-flying arboreal frogs can also descend, but only at angles greater than 45 degrees, which is referred to as parachuting. So there's a flying frog, and this article is saying that there is a parachuting frog as well. All of the frogs that I have personally seen have not been flying. Alfred Russell Wallace made one of the earliest reports of a flying frog. Can you imagine to be the first person who realized that there is a flying frog out there? You're like, guys, you're not gonna believe it, but I saw a frog flying. <laughs> well, why is the page so short for this frog? It's flying. Let's look at gliding flight. Gliding flight is heavier than air flight without the use of thrust. Sounds to me like falling. The term volplaning also refers to this mode of flight in animals. Aircraft gliders. Glider, also known as sailplane. Didn't know gliders were also known as sailplane? Probably because I've never been on a glider. Hang glider. Paraglider, speed glider, ram glider, uh, just came ram air parachute, rotor kite, military glider, paper airplane. So glad paper airplanes made the list of gliders. Birds using gliding flight, albatross, condor, vulture, eagle, stork, frigate bird. In order to minimize their use of energy, sounds like the lazy kind of birds that I like. Frigate bird? Frigate birds are a family of seabirds called frigatidae which are found all across tropical and subtropical oceans. Would you look at that beautiful neck? Honey, I'm choking on something really big. Black plumage, long, deep forked tails, and long hooked bills. Females have white underbellies and males have a distinct red golar pouch. I didn't even notice your golar pouch. It looks fine. Which they inflate during breeding season to attract females. Ladies, how can you resist that? Frega today are a sister group to the Suridae, which consists of cormorants, darters, gannets, and boobies, probably the popular bird in Boy Scouts. Seasonally monogamous, frigate birds nest colonially. According to a study in the journal Nature Communication, scientists attached an accelerometer and an electroencephalogram, nailed it, testing device on nine great frigate birds to measure if they slept during flight. The study found the birds do sleep, but usually only using one hemisphere of the brain at a time and usually sleep while ascending at higher altitudes. What the heck? So they're like working out, like going way higher and they're, <laughs> they're sleeping? The amount of time midair sleeping was less than an hour and always at night. Talk about a sleep at the wheel. <laughs> the Great Frigate Burger was venerated by the Rapa Nui people on Easter Island. Ooh, I like Easter and I like islands. Let's check that out. Easter Island is an island and special territory of Chile in the southeastern Pacific Ocean at the southern eastern most point of the Polynesian Triangle of Oceania. There you are. Wait, where is it? Oh, there it is. Look at that. Looks like it's in the water. To be honest, I just came here for the heads. I knew that they would be here. I'm not saying move to Easter Island right now, but I am saying move to Easter Island right now. Look at these temperatures. 74, 75, 74, 72, 68, 66, 65, 65, 65, 66, 69, 69, 71, 69. A perfect 70 degrees. Oh my gosh, and only like 10 rainy days a month. Actually, that's kind of a lot. The immunosuppressant drug, Cyrolimus, was first discovered in the bacterium Streptomyces hygroscopius. This totally nailed that again. In a soil sample from Easter Island, the drug is known as rapamycin, after Rapa Nui, is now being studied for extending longevity in mice. Well, let's look at this longevity-inducing drug, Cyrolimus. Also known as rapamycin, it's sold in a brand name Rapamine, among others, is a macrolide compound that is used to coat coronary stents, prevent organ transplant rejection, treat rare lung disease called lymphogeoleomimatosis. I tried. I really tried. And treat pervascular epithelioid cell tumor. It has immunosuppressant functions in humans, especially useful in preventing the rejection of kidney transplants. Oh dang, look at rapamycin being produced. Look at those double bonds. As of 2016, studies in cells, animals, and humans have suggested that MTOR activation has processed underlying systemic lupus. As of 2016, rapamycin had been tested in a small clinical trials in people with lupus. Let's look at systemic lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disease which the body's immune system mistakenly attacks healthy tissue in many parts of the body. Honestly, lupus sounds horrible. Symptoms vary among people and may be mild to severe. Painful and swollen joints, fever, chest pain, hair loss, mouth ulcer, swollen lymph nodes, feeling tired, 
and red rash, which is most commonly on the face. Among identical twins, if one is affected, there's a 24% chance the other one will also develop the disease. Low grade fever, terrible, photosensitivity, awful, psychological, fatigue, no bueno, loss of appetite, bummer, face, butterfly rash, dang it, mouth and nose, ulcers, muscles, aches, joints, arthritis, kidneys, inflammation, pericardium, inflammation, pleura, inflammation, fingers and toes, poor circulation. If you're somehow able to deal with this and you have lupus, I uh, admire you deeply. Usual onset, 50 to 45 years of age. Causes, unclear, dang. Happens at a frequency of two to seven per 10,000. Well, there you have it, folks. We went from Costco to lupus. In reverse order, we learned about lupus. Watch out for that butterfly rash on your face. Surolimus, also known as rapamycin, immunosuppressant drug for a kidney transplant. Easter Island, I just really wanted to see the heads. Frigate birds, amazing golder patches. Face the men. Gliding flight, glad that a paper airplane counts. Makes me feel like I've been more adventurous in my life. Flying frog, who knew frogs would fly? Pupils, I got two of them. Aperture, the little opening for letting light in. Light meter, using a photoresistor in order to figure out how much light is coming in. And Costco, where apparently they have optometrists on site. I hope you've learned something on this really fast journey. This is all about learning, having fun, and being curious. Until next time, if you have suggestions on what starting word I should use next time for my Wikipedia search, please tell. If you want me to try to figure out what an ending place would be, please tell. Peace.